Good morning, Will. Good morning. So I think Charles and I fixed our error that was causing us to have uh, multiplicities on the order of the number of atoms in the earth, you know, as opposed to uh, a realistic number. But yeah, now it's... Uh... Remind me what the error was again? Basically, we were getting um, values of like 10 to the 40 in our uh, spectra. So that was obviously wrong. Um, oh, yes. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it looks fixed now. I think we were pointing to the wrong Yoda file when we were trying to plot stuff. And so it was, it had completely wrong values for um, the scaling. Not scaling, what's the, uh, I think it gets, um, I forget the name of the variable. Uh, waiting, the, the mm -hmm. sum W. Yeah, that was wrong. Hi, Christine. Good morning, Antonio. Uh, I'm testing uh, the fix that Christian sent us. Uh, for for he, he was testing it. <laughs> so I was going to wait until he, well, maybe if you get a test done first, but yeah, if that works, I can do it on the version on RCF and resubmit a bunch of stuff, but it won't be done until after the workshop, but I could still, after the workshop, run everybody's stuff. Yeah, I, I think that the, the fix will work for uh, maybe a newer version of Pythia that, um, because we used 8.2 something. Yeah. And I think this one will work for uh, 8.3 something. Ah, uh, so the issue is, um, at least one issue is that your code for me to generate Pythia did not work on 8. Point yeah, that, that's why three. I will need some time to yeah. adapt the code. But uh, maybe. Well, we could also ask Christian, who may know um, off the top of his head. Yeah, we can, but I think he's teaching now. So he is we'll... teaching now, so we are, yeah. Okay, I Mark. think, yeah, I assigned you to that room, but you don't have to enter yet. Right, that's what I assumed. Um, Antonio, I'm going to make you host. Can you make me co-host after I do that? Uh, what's the idea for today? We're going to... I think troubleshooting. And we also have, so I... We have no one who was ready to present results, which kind of makes sense because the bugs found yesterday uh, preclude high statistics runs. Mm -hmm. um, but, well, 
what we did do, what the fix yesterday, because Christian is awesome, um, now we have a version of Rivet Merge on RCF, which works for people. Yeah. So I think um, I think that we should have, well, I think that we should first tell everybody what that fix is. Um, and some people can proceed with development now that that's possible. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we could also go through analyses and see where people are. Um, as so, let me ask. Um, we we currently have people trickling in as well. So, um, what's happened almost every day is that people have come in, most people have come in in the first five minutes, but we only had like three people here by 9 a.m. Okay, let me, for everybody who is here, I am going to share, let me first find the message yeah, uh, I see there were replies that I didn't um, notice until this morning. Okay. So we have this fix and I see that actually David and Tomash tried it. Um, so, what we did last night was install rivet 3.1.3 on rcf and christian implemented a um implemented a fix which we then rolled out on by editing the source code of rivet on rcf so it is not actually fully deployed um for everybody. So you then would use a different set setup. So you, instead of the lines on, I think it was slide five, you're gonna do these three lines to set up rivet. Um, and then, um, so Tomash, you should be able to um, use it in the terminal. Oh, you know, there's one thing the uh, I see now if because the default is um, the default is on RCF is TCSH these lines should say CSH not SH if you are not using bash if you're you and if you're using bash so don't copy exactly because note that I put the C in parentheses there. Okay, thanks. I will try with this uh, CSH. Okay, and great. I was able to run. So what you're actually doing is that you're running a version of Rivet, which is installed in Ragov's home directory um, with this fix. Um, and then David, I believe what your error means is, um, so these are warnings and that may be something to ask Antonio for help with because it looks like an, a warning related to the centrality. Okay. So let me ask, okay. so, sorry, was someone? Oh, no, sorry, I was just talking to myself. I oh, okay. 
that's what the mute button's for. Um, okay, so let me ask for a show of hands, um, virtual hands. Um, if you think that your analysis is done modulo high statistics tests, please click yes. If you think that your, your analysis is not done, but you have an idea, so you think you, you know what you would have to do to complete it, um, click coffee. Um, and if your if you have an outstanding issue that you would like help on, um, or you don't know how you would complete the analysis, click no. So again, so Christine, not to split hairs, but if we don't know what the response is, just because we haven't been able to merge, say, if we have like RAA plots are a big part of it, um, just click. Yeah. No. I mean, it might fix within the next half hour, but I don't know at all. Okay. Click no, because what I'm going to take the no's as is people who would benefit from more interactive troubleshooting. Okay, thanks. I am seeing, so the two yeses are my students who have benefited from badgering Antonio a lot when we're not meeting interactively. So those are also more, uh, and the one coffee is also my student. So those are unfair because they get, they have a low barrier to badgering Antonio. Okay, so what I am seeing is a lot of no's. Um, so Stacy Ann, we're doing a poll right now. If you feel like your analysis is done except for higher statistics testing, click yes. If you um, know how, think you know how you need to finish the analysis, um, but you're not done yet, choose the coffee cup. And if you have higher, if you still need to work on testing and development, you're not sure if you need additional help, um, or you know that you need additional help, click no. What's the last word? Good morning. So, so yes is you think you're done, okay. except obviously no one's been able to do high statistics tests for because we've had technical issues with Pythia and Rivet. Um, coffee cup is you see a very you see a clear path to complete the analysis. So you think that you know what you have to do, um, although it's not done yet. And no is basically anything else. You might benefit from addition. You might have more questions. You might be, you, you may have an active problem or you may not know if you're gonna have more problems. Okay, so what I see is two coffee cups and two yeses. So that's a third of the participants are done or see a straightforward path to complete completion. And one third see a straightforward path to completion two thirds are gonna need more help. So I think we do, um, we do do the interactive sessions today. Um, and we, what I would like to do if y'all are willing um, is ask you to do whatever needs to be done to finish these analyses as soon as we have a patch for Pythia to fix the issue with the weights 
which maybe in the next couple days, I can regenerate high statistics. And I, w I can, f when analyses are complete, I can get high statistics tests for everybody's analysis. Um, but that may require a little bit of, that will require some work outside of the workshop, which was not plan A. Um, but if we can do it, we can actually possibly start making some physics conclusions because we see a large scale comparison between Pythia Angantir and a bunch of data, which is exciting. Um, I would tend to say we should do breakout rooms unless anybody, uh, Antonio Ragov, let me, let me reiterate for a couple latecomers. There was a note on the, um, there was a note on the Slack directing you to use a different version of Rivet if you're going to need to use Rivet Merge. All right, Antonio and Ragav, anything before we do breakout rooms? No, well, I think nothing. I just I have a, a star management meeting at nine thirty, so I'm wondering if ah, I'll, be in the, okay. I'll be in the room. Uh, I'm thinking I'll get another laptop because it's the last day and connect to the management meeting. And then if people yell, I'll mute and then talk and then do the opposite. <laughs> this is the downside of Zoom meetings: is that before you could not physically be in two places at once, yeah. and now you can do two places at oh, once. Oh, I feel you... bad. Yeah, I, I should be able to connect. I have two machines. Why not? <laughs> Um, Ajiro, you raised your hand. Yeah, um, so I sort of, before we uh, move to breakout rooms, so I kind of need to know um, uh, sort of what I missed yesterday. And I mean, and I mean, I don't know if I necessarily need help, but it's just, um, I, I don't know if we have stats yet because what's holding back the analysis is ah. the, the systems that I need to um, complete it. <laughs> Yeah, um, and, um, and I don't question. know if anyone had a look at the code itself to make sure that uh, the observables are calculated correctly. And so it would just be a matter of um, fine, having the systems ready and, and running them. Yes, so um, what happened yesterday um, is that we identified two unfortunate bugs. Um, one of them is in Rivet Merge, where um, it was not picking up, it, it wouldn't find Yoda files in the current working directory. So, uh, sorry, it would not find analyses in the current working directory. So you could only merge files from committed analyses, which obviously is going to cause an issue. Um, and there is this local fix if you are using RCF, um, where you can use Ragov's version of Rivet. The other problem is a little bit trickier. Um, the Some of the event weights in Pythia Angantir are coming up negative, and this is causing problems in analyses and leading to weird crashes. Um, we are working on a local fix. I did generate events for every system in your um, paper, but they might not, you might get some weird crashes. So it, it I would say it's worth running over them, but if you see weird bugs, it might not be your fault. Okay. I, I have started generating new events with the patch on Pythia Applied. I've generated the first 12,000 gold, gold 200 GV min bias. I'm just testing them on an analysis right now. And then I will just make them available in a web page from which you can just w get it into RCF or something like that. Oh, sweet. And what we're going to try to do is that when I have that, I'm going to just, I'm going to badger Christian to get a version working on um, RCF so I can regenerate events as well for every system we need. 
but it's not going to happen by noon today. All right. So, so yeah. the patch I put on, on, on Slack seems fairly complete. It seems to actually work. Um, so we can take five minutes with a screen share on RCF if you have a reasonably well-behaved installation and I can guide you to where to patch it in. We, uh, on RCF, I've been using Rivet 8.2 something. Pick 8.2. Yeah. Uh, okay. Th then so, I don't know. Okay. So what did you use to not, generate the samples? 8.2. Or 8.301. The, the problem with 8.3 is that Antonio's code that he wrote for generating events, which takes arguments with all of the um, right systems, uh, there's some issue with HEPMC versions when we tried to move to 8.3. So I would propose, Christian, maybe you and I go into a breakout room and try to hammer this out. And um, then others can work with Antonio and Ragov while we do that. Would that, does that sound reasonable? Or we could wait until after the workshop and focus today on analysis debugging because we're not gonna have samples by, the, by noon today. You, you own me for the next three hours. So, so whatever you think is best, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> okay, I think we, let me ask you to, if you can send me and Antonio your code for generating events in Pythia 8.3, and after the workshop, I think we'll try to get some more events generated, but maybe not during the workshop. Sure. And then I think we move to breakout rooms now. Okay, I am gonna go to my breakout room. I may poke back into the main room if no one has anything for me. Hi, Christian. Do you know how long more it will take um, to complete the event run? Um, it has now analyzed 11,000 out of 12,000 events. Uh, so a couple more minutes, then I'm done testing the events and then I will just upload them immediately. Okay, thanks. So Antonio, it looks like there's a lot of people. There's probably a lot of questions. Um, but as far as merge getting a seg fault, uh, what what path forward should I take? Is there something I should be trying, or just wait to get to the front of the line and say, "Please look at my screen and help me figure this out"? I think that's always the best way. I mean, okay. look at this screen. Uh, but before that, a question. Uh, I, I think I was sent you to. Uh, a breakout room that Christine prepared. Sure. And then if people have some question, maybe I will direct them to you. Yes. Okay. Um, okay, David, please, uh, you can share your screen and we can have a look. Okay, great. Um, so uh, this is my command. I think I tried it also with the, the, the beam, but embarrassing if that's just the one thing that I missed. Can you, um, but if I run the command, so if, if you see here, rivet version, so I, I, I did the, the loading bit. So these are, I'm in bash. These are the, the scripts that were indicated in um, inside of Slack. Uh, 
this is Rivet version 3.1.3, so it appears to be working. Um, and then if I say merge these guys, these are just small, kind of like very small sample sizes that I brought over from my own computer where I've been using a Docker uh, implementation. Uh, looks like it's running very slowly, but um, it, it gave me some of these errors and then it seg faulted. Mm -hmm. And if RCF runs really slow, I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. There we go. So same errors, same seg fault, at least it's consistent. Yeah, uh, the warnings, I think they are harmless. Uh, the, in the rivet merge, uh, I, it's fine that you don't find uh, the centrality percentiles. Okay. Getting a segmentation fault, uh, it's more likely that it's some, there's a problem in your finalize. Maybe we can have a look there. Sure. Oof. Uh. Um, okay, so I have some counters. So I'm, I'm checking if my counters had any fill to see if it's copper, copper, PT. Um, I've, I've, in debug sessions, I'm, I'm confident this is working. So I, when I run over copper files, this does work. When I run over TP files, this works. My data will probably look a little bit funny because I had those with the funny weightings and mm -hmm. I just went in and I forced all of the weightings to equal one. Oh, okay. Wrote a script and, and so, so the weightings are bad, but I mean, that shouldn't actually change everything. Um, if it has PP, there's actually nothing to do. I just want it to save the output file because out of all of the plots that I'm making, PP is just the denominator for some of the copper copper plots. So I want nothing to happen. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that's fine. Um, and then otherwise, if it has copper, um, then I have four centrality bins and there's two kinds of plots, um, but I put everything inside of this, this loop. And uh, if I don't have data within the centrality bin, then of course I, I just check and say, look, if my counter within, so this is my counter for centrality bins, they go out. Um, other than that, if it has the centrality bin, then it will come through. Um, and so uh, these are spectra. This is the only thing I do with them. So the spectra get weighted and then I say I'm, I'm done with them. Um, I have a ratio of spectra, um, which is figures 2A and 2B. Figures 3A uh, is only generated if I have PP data. Um, and of course the PP I use for all centralities. So um, I normalize the PP data and then I, uh, then I take this ratio, I normalize the, the, well, the numerator, and then I take the ratio and that gives me my RAA for figures 3A and 3B. They're, they're basically equivalent. Um, I don't know, is, is this helpful? I mean. Uh, yes. Uh, it, it, um... Okay, um, that's not fancy, but maybe we could put some C outs to see where it's breaking. Because, I mean, seg fault could be a lot of things. Oh, so I can put C outs, and because it's running finalized, the merge will also print C outs. Yes. Okay. Um, so not to be overly shy, I think there's probably like a line of people with similar questions. So uh, if I just let go of the screen and I put some C outs in, I can figure out where it's breaking and then I'll pipe back up again and become yeah, yeah. demanding. Okay, that sounds good to me. I will be back in a minute. Okay. Uh, Stacian, I will uh, then send you to Christine's room. Okay, thank you.
Okay, uh, Antonio, uh, I have a question. I think that I'm at the point where I would uh, like to use some higher statistics event, but I know that uh, we have some problem. But f from what I understand, I think that uh, there are some files uh, at, at this moment from from history or from another project workshop, etc. Uh, uh, there is a list of those files, or do you know if I tell tell them what I need if it is, or I I should wait until the files are produced? Uh, you can try to use uh, the files that we already generated. It's very likely that you uh, have some issues, but I, I don't know. Maybe for um, development uh, at the point that you are, maybe you can try to use it. Uh, okay, and uh, where I can find these files? Uh, let me try to find. I think Christine posted yesterday or the day before the, the path to to the files on RCF. Okay, I find. I will put here in the chat. Maybe you can have a look if you if you can use this data. Okay, thank you. I will take a look. And I have also one question regarding the centralities. I have uh, the on gold. Uh, system where uh, in the analysis I require uh, cent centralities. Do we have also this this files or this uh, files for centralities needs to be also generated? Yeah, it needs to be generated. Um, you could use uh, the calibration for gold gold. Uh, of course, this is not the right thing to do. But for development, you're going to have some um, some centrality values and and try to work with that. Yes, okay. I, I am using now the gold gold, but now I want to make sure or uh, uh, to look if the uh, plots make sense. And I think that at this point, <laughs> the, the good centrality is, is a good thing to have. But okay, I will wait for for for. Uh, for, for the driver in the meantime, I will try uh, with the gold gold. Okay, thanks. Okay. Antonio, a quick question. When it reruns the finalize, um, does that mean that I have to recompile the code? 
like, I mean, just because my dot SO uh, has been run on my local machine, so I'm updating it here. But if I change the finalize, do I need to recompile before I uh, yes. tell it to, to merge? Yes, you need, if you change something on finalize, uh, in order to rivet merge, um, apply this change, you have to recompile. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, a follow-up question then. If I have to recompile my code, but I've only changed finalize, to test it properly, do the Yoda files care about what's happened inside of finalize? They do, don't they? Uh, which Yoda files you mean? Your output? Oh, okay, yeah. So I, I run my code and I get my output for copper, copper, Yoda file. So if there's a copper Yoda file output and then a proton Yoda file output, and then I want to merge the two. But now I'm adding print statements into the finalized section. Do I have to regenerate my copper Yoda file and my PP Yoda file, or can I just change the finalize and test the merge? Yeah, you, you don't need to change the outputs. Just uh, change the finalize, recompile, and then uh, Rivet will take your output and, and work with that. You, you don't need to regenerate your output. So does that mean that the, the finalized module doesn't actually determine what gets put into the Yoda file? When I, when I run the code, not when I'm merging it. Uh, yes, it, it will not, I mean, it will just read and then produce the, the, the final merged output. But I mean, is that just because I'm adding print statements so I have confidence I'm not changing them? Like if, if I were to dramatically change my finalize, like like does it if I change my finalize module inside of my code, mm -hmm. does that mean that the, the 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 Yoda file that I generate when I'm actually running my code just does not care what's inside of finalize? Like it's it's not dependent on it. Exactly. Okay. Uh, the, the only uh, output that will uh, see the difference is the, the final merged output. Okay. 
but, but, but otherwise I could, I could delete my finalized section and run my code and still get the same copper file and the, the same PP file. Yes. Yes. Because okay. enough in, in, in finalize uh, will be, you know, will run when you just uh, using the PP or the copper copper simulation to run your analysis. Because you, you really just want to run finalize when you have both outputs. Right, okay. Man, it's so slow. That gives me so many questions, though. Because, like, if if I ran input that 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 required like the ratio of copper to PP, so I'm I'm careful to. I guess I don't understand how that works. So that means that when I plot it, the plotting also reads the finalized section. You mean when you do, for example, rivet, make it HTML. Uh... Yes. No, it, it will only read the, the final output. You do not um, read fi use finalize or some part of the, the code. So how does that work in the sense that like, suppose that I am trying to plot the ratio of like a couple of spectra and I don't do the division until the finalized section of my code. In that sense, I could run copper, copper, and in my copper, copper code, I get my pion spectra and I get my proton spectra. And then in the finalized section, I say, divide the copper and the pions and the protons. And then I use make HTML. And I'm going to want the make, make HTML to plot the ratio of the two of those. Yes. Um, but if I'm just giving it the copper file, and creating the copper file hasn't run the or hasn't really used the finalized section. How will it do it? Does, does that make sense? Yeah, for example, if you have only the copper copper, uh, yeah. when you generated this file, um, you made sure that you don't run finalize. That's why you check if the counters uh, are, are filled or not. Because if you run copper copper, it means that you're PP counters are empty. Yes. And then you don't run finalize. So you just want to run finalize when you have the copper copper and the PP all filled. Right. And then when it does run finalize, finalize is influencing the the Yoda file output, right? So like if I if I have the ratio within copper copper, like if if like one of my figures is, it's a ratio of pions to protons just in copper. Um, uh, regardless of what's in the, the P, P collision. And so then when I have the copper output file, that the copper Yoda file that's produced by running just over copper should give me, according to finalize, I, I want it to give me the ratio of the proton to the pion spectra. And yeah, usually you don't. Because I mean, you don't don't want to do any ratio uh, and finalize until you have all the data, right? Because, um, for example, if you're working only with one uh, collision system, for example, PP, right, and you want a ratio of, uh, I don't know, um, d plus over d zero. For example. Sure. Okay. And you want to make this ratio only when you have your both the meson spectra uh, field, uh, right? The whole statistics that you have. Okay. O otherwise, because rivet merge uh, will not merge uh, scatter to d plots, so, so it will not merge uh, ratio plots. Okay. So that's why you make sure that you don't run uh, finalize until you have all your uh, outputs and you only run finalize when you want to merge everything because then it will read the output, it will generate the, the spectra plots and then it will make the ratio. So uh, until then, none of your ratio plots should be 
in the in the Yoda file. I mean, they, they so, will be there, but they will be empty. So if I was doing that and I had only one type of input file, say I had 50 different PP input files. Mm -hmm. And so I'm running it, say, 50 different times and I'm getting 50 different output files. How do I stop finalize from making the ratio 50 different times and only have it run finalized when I merge my 50 output files? Does that make sense? That, that, that seems to be a question. I mean, I've, I've done something similar where I have a ratio that's only within the copper copper. And so in my logic, I said, go ahead and make the ratio if you're only running copper, but you know, ignore all the RAA because you need PP data to do that. Which maybe that's how I got a bug, like it ran the ratio in copper copper and then it wanted to merge it and it was there or something, I don't know. Yeah, okay. For one system, now I have to, I would have to think about it. Okay. But okay, um, let's be more practical. You have two collision systems. Yeah. And, and okay, you want to do the ratios only when you have uh, entries in your copper, copper, and PP uh, histograms. Yes. So uh, your uh, PP output and the copper copper output, they will not have the ratios. Yes. They will be only produced when you call uh, finalize using rivet merge, uh, and then it will produce the ratios. Yes. And so as far as my output's concerned, I might as well just tell copper copper to just don't produce output unless you see both of them and tell TP don't create produce output unless you have both of them and then just do everything when you have both of them. Yes. Because in fact, if you have a look at the, the, the PP or the copper copper output, you're going to have uh, two tables for each histogram. One of them uh, in the name, there's this raw which uh -huh. is uh, the, the, hist the raw histogram without any normalization. Uh, and then you will have another version that it's normalized. And then Rivet is just clever about the ones that just have to get totally replaced, like yeah. the, the ratio ones, which you shouldn't try to make in the first place. And maybe, maybe that's what I'm getting. Because I am, I am making internal ratio plots within the copper copper system and I can, I can just get rid of those. Mm. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. It could be uh, okay, depending on how it's done. Okay. But I, I think the best way is uh, just to make the ratios when, when you're sure that you have everything for, for both systems. Including the ratios that are internal to one system. Yeah, I, I think it would be better. Okay, I, I can do that.
Oh, hello. Uh, Leszek here. Um, I have a few questions uh, and actually I may probably need uh, mm, to just uh, join a breakout room with uh, somebody and uh, help me with my uh, with basically starting uh, my rivet analysis. So can you hear me? Yes. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, so, so, so I, I think I, I mm -hmm, yes. No, sorry, go ahead. Uh, so I think I got it uh, running. Um, I, I do get some histograms. Um, um, maybe not not really what I expected. Uh, I suspect that the um, there might be uh, some issue with uh, the um, um, HEP data files uh, the, that I got, but. Uh, uh, so maybe we could uh, we could simply start with that, uh, and then uh, uh, I have uh, problems uh, running this uh, uh, um, double setup with uh, a PP and uh, Degold uh, uh, um, uh, collision systems, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it works fine for Degold with uh, star calibrations. Uh, but uh, for PP, just uh, end with a sec fault. So, uh, yeah, I have no idea what's going on, basically. Uh, do, mm -hmm. Would you like to share your screen? Maybe we can yes, yes, see sure. the plots, what's happening there. Oh, OK. For the plots, uh, right, I have a kind of quite a few plots. Yeah, just give me a minute. All right. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Okay, so th these are basically the uh, the plots. Uh, well, so uh, I think the the one which is uh, most important is this. Uh, uh, DO5 and uh, DO6. Uh, so DO5 it's uh, supposed to be uh, mm, invariant cross section uh, for uh, JPSI production in PP collisions. And uh, in my code, I look for JPSI uh, and I just get, uh, I have two bins, uh, 0 to 2 and 2 to 4 GV, and uh, looks like I'm getting only. Uh, this uh, two to four field. I haven't scaled uh, the um, the results, so I guess the the there is simply on the axis. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yes, so I think this is actually wo working. Uh, maybe j just for some reason uh, this. Uh, source file that I'm using. I mean, uh, the, I think you used uh, Pythia, right? You generated some events in Pythia, and that's what I'm analyzing here. Is that correct? Yes. OK, so I guess there is no JPSI below <laughs> 2 GV for some reason. Yeah, maybe. Um, OK. Um... And this is when you run Digo. You said that when you run PP, you mm -hmm. you get a, an error. Ah yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, I I get it, and I have no 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 idea why. Uh, let me just check. I have the uh, rivet set up here. Uh, okay. Run analysis. Oh, I just need to double check if I uh, enabled. Uh... Oh, all right. So that's the double setup. All right. Uh, so I think I might have not set up Rivet properly yet. Uh, Okay, I've done most of that yesterday. Uh, 
Oh, I also have a question uh, about uh, histograms. So, uh, can I just make an arbitrary histogram, or does it have to be connected to one of the tables uh, in HEP data? Yeah, you, you, you can do an arbitrary histogram. Um, the way it's done, I think it's in our slides. Let me just check the slide number. All right. Yeah, you have it, it's slide 19. Do you have access to the slides? Otherwise I can paste the, the link here. Okay, uh, uh, so uh, which part of the slides you want to see? All right. Mm. Yeah, it's slide 19. You have this uh, way of booking. Okay, uh, yes. Yes, so you can uh, book using the object, a string that will be the name of the, the histogram, uh, the number of bins, mm -hmm. uh, minimum and max, or you just pass a vector with the bins and it will generate a, a histogram uh, with the bins that you select. So using vector, you can have bins mm -hmm. with different uh, intervals. Okay, yes, yes, sure. So, uh, and then I have to uh, manually add them to the uh, this plot uh, plots file, right? Uh, or, yeah, if, if uh, you declare get... it in, in, mm -hmm. in the init part and fill the histograms and everything, it would be, yeah, it would be automatically in your, in your output. Oh, all right, all right. Of course, there will be no comparison to data because it's not connected mm -hmm. to one of the, the histograms that you have in your data, but you can in principle use these histograms for other things, maybe to help building another histogram that you need. Okay, uh, so in, in the meantime, I realized that I have problem with my uh, um, rivet setup. Uh, I did that yesterday properly, but uh, today I tried to um, have this uh, to use those updates. Okay. Yeah, I, I so pasted in works. the chat again uh, how to source the, mm -hmm. the new one. Um, All right. I don't. No, I think this one in the. In the slides, I'm not sure if the, it's the, the updated one. With the, yeah, with the, 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 these are old for sure. Uh, oh, wait, I, I'm not that familiar with Zoom. Uh, how do I access chat now? Uh, there should be, oh, right. Mm. Oh, yes. This one. Yeah, with the source. Mm. Oh, there's some error. Okay. Uh, initially, I just put these commands into my own script. Uh, and it seems to work. Hmm. Uh, sorry, which comments the the rivet build and or, or are you mean the the source? Um, uh, these uh, uh, these commands uh, uh, you posted to, to to Slack uh, to to use this newest version of uh, of Revet on mm -hmm. RCF. Um, yeah, they seemed to uh, to work, but not anymore. Okay, what is the problem with this line? Uh, can't find. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I I, mm -hmm. I don't have access to RCF, so I I don't have a lot of experience with the sourcing this version. 
but maybe I could send you to Christine. I think she could help you um, right. understand what's happening, why you're not able to. Yeah, I just tried okay. to, I'm getting that base error. The, 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 the same error? Yeah. Same error. The same mm. error, uh, it seems... rather than RCF. I mm -hmm. changed the Yeah, but the, interesting when I, when... Can I interrupt mm -hmm. you? Uh, okay. We discussed it at the beginning of this meeting, and you need to run it with, uh, C, uh, not with SH, the ending, but uh, it needs to be CSH. CSH. The all ah, yes, yes, yes. I think this is what I figured out already. Okay, I can just use uh, yes, this yes, part. Yes, exactly like, like, like this. Yeah, I initially tried CSH. I think I wasn't doing it properly. Okay. Okay, and also then you need to uh, ex you know, source uh, uh, LaTeX there. So the command is, uh, I think it is, yeah, slide uh, slide five. Mm -hmm. uh, on that presentation, there is uh, TCSH, and there is a command set path, and yes, this yes, command I... will include LaTeX uh, on on RCF. Uh, so I did that before, but I had to and, and, modify it. And this three that uh, are modified, and you should be okay. Okay, so this this, this should be fine. Oh, yeah, just RCF is very slow. <sighs> yeah, I think in the command line this work, this version works. You are missing a bracket at the at the end of the command. There is a bin and a bracket. I think that uh, if you yes, look at yes, this this I no noticed. Uh, and in the previous one, Ah, right, right. No. <clears throat> ah, right. And another one. Yeah, so, so, sorry for that. Now everything should be fine. Okay, so uh, yes, let me uh, show you how I run uh, uh, the analysis. Mm -hmm. Oh, so um, I also have another question. So. Um, is it uh, does it matter if uh, whether I specify uh, um, if uh, my data uh, come from PP or the gold collisions in uh, uh, this HEP data files in this uh, Yoda files? Uh, is it relevant for uh, for Rivet? Uh, yes, uh, because you want just mm -hmm. some histograms to be filled with. Uh, the gold or or a PP that you're also using, right? Yes, yes, but uh, actually, uh, so um, in my case, somebody uploaded uh, um, uh, the the data to uh, uh, on on HEP data uh, already, and uh, um, uh, I simply downloaded that. Uh, added uh, beans, uh, then used sandbox to to uh, mm, to obtain uh, uh, Yoda file again with uh, proper binning. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, uh, actually most of the tables uh, are done uh, as a, this kind of uh, uh, X Y plots uh, with no binning. Um, Oh, maybe mm -hmm. I can I can show you. So, uh, 
oh yeah uh, for example uh, such a plot uh, this uh, mean square of uh, pt versus collision energy so i guess uh, such a plot is not really relevant for rivet since mm. uh, rivet needs uh, to have beans right um yes i i think you could maybe plot it as a scatter 2d mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure but i, I think maybe you, you can but for other uh if you have a, a 1d histogram then you, you need the beams mm -hmm. yeah so the uh i i simply focused on this uh, these two plots uh these are just uh, invariant cross sections. Mm -hmm. um, so I was working on this. Uh... In your .yoda uh, mm -hmm. file, you have the, the beans for this, these histograms? Uh, yes, yes, I do. I can, I can show it. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at this. Oh, yes, it's this one. Okay, so uh, this plot is actually D5, uh, DO5. Uh, oh, yes, this one. This one. So this is how it looks like. Okay, so uh, you have uh, these are central values L lower uncertainty, upper uncertainty. Uh, I think that this uh, shows up just because I uh, added beans in um, in YAML files, and then uh, of course it got processed by the sandbox. So I think this is uh, this is fine. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing that I noted in this file mm -hmm. is that uh, see the name of the table you have uh, slash ref slash rivet analysis name. Oh, right. Hmm. Yeah, this rivet analysis name you have to replace by the name of your analysis, which is star underscore, I think it's mm -hmm. 2016. It's small. I... Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so See, the, uh... Because mm -hmm. otherwise, uh, when you plot your histograms, the data will not appear there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why we saw only the, the red lines when you showed the, mm -hmm. the histograms. Yes, I understand. So I'm just wondering, did, did it simply get, uh, uh, I don't know, so some automatic process? Yeah, when, when the manually. date is on HEP data, this, mm -hmm. it, when you download the file, it already comes with the name, uh, the right name. But if All it's right. on uh, Sandbox or if you didn't upload it yet, then it will come like this. Uh-huh. All right, sure. So that 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 should uh, fix it. Uh, yes, but besides that, uh, uh, let's let's come back here. Okay, besides that, it should be fine. I actually uh, uh, included only uh, the um, uh, my data, uh, those that are published as part of the paper. Uh, I haven't really put. Uh, all of these, well, th these are uh, in fact not included in the original uh, upload to have data. So mm -hmm. I guess I would have to add them by hand if I need them, but I, I need those two red points. So these are those, I think. Okay. Okay, so it seems uh, rather correct. Oh, and uh, uh, back to my previous question. I don't see any information here whether it's uh, PP or uh, D gold. So actually, uh, this part should be uh, for PP data, while this part should be for D gold. And there is no information about it here. Uh, I, okay, now I think I understand your your question. Yes. About that. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so for this, um, it, it's not really. It's okay. It's not a problem. It's just mm -hmm. important that in your analysis you treat uh, them properly. I mean. You filled the yes, right yes. program with PP and the other one with the gold, but it's not a problem that it's not, there's nothing specific showing which one is PP or or the gold. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I guess as long as uh, 
the histograms uh, contain uh, properly formatted data and they are properly labeled uh, everything should be fine uh, rivet yes. should pick, pick it up and uh, that's that's what matters ultimately yes okay good uh, so i think uh, we can move on uh, here uh, so I run uh, two analyzes here. Oh, and actually, I don't see any any problem now. Yeah, I used to get uh, segmentation faults for uh, PP part. So maybe uh, it got fixed uh, by the new rivet setup. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Okay, uh, I, I then, just see that uh, at the that's end, correct. Uh, I think you mm -hmm. did rivet merge at the end, right? Yes, yes, I have it in uh, uh, well, in your I have it here, rivet, rivet merge. Okay, okay, I, I will uh, just ask you to remove uh, that part that you have uh, dash capital O sent because I saw that it's creating a problem when you try to do rivet merge. Mm. What is it? Which which part is it again? You have the dash capital O sent from. Ah, the yes, end. yes, I see it. Uh, remove yeah, the whole part. part. You, yes, you can remove. Oh, uh, right. Because if you saw in, in your comment line mm -hmm. at the end there was an error, uh, I think it's. Yes. Because of that. Uh huh. All right, then let's let's just have a look. Oh, and uh, I also have a question about the uh, uh, access for the for the plots. Uh, uh, do they get adjusted automatically? Because uh, when we saw them. Uh, here they, they look a bit uh, uh, unfortunate. Um, like for example, for this uh, DO5, uh, I basically get uh, a line pro produced by Rivet, and then uh, on the axis, I, I have no idea uh, what is the range. I, I guess I can yeah. set it manually in that case. Yes, you can. And you have to edit your dot plot file. Uh, I don't remember mm -hmm. from the top of my head how, how it's exactly is the command, but maybe I can mm -hmm. I can search. All right, uh, I can have a maybe quick look uh, at the plot file. Mm. Oh, so this this got updated. Uh, I think. Okay, I guess uh, you, uh, I can maybe look look it up in the documentation. Uh, there should be a way to set them by hand. Yes, you do okay. it in your dot plot. Uh, mm -hmm. If I find, I, I send you. But yeah, maybe it's probably in, in the documentation. All right. Uh, so let's let's have a look here. Um, No generated calibration histogram. Yeah, that this this warnings they are harmless because when you call rivet merge, you don't need any more the the centrality table. Okay. But if you if you look in yes. your files, probably it generated something like rivet underscore final dot node. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you're calling, uh, let me just have a look. And I just need uh, to, to plot. Uh, what is this command for plotting?
Oh yes, should be here. Oh, and uh, one final question: uh, How um, uh, am I going to control uh, the amount of uh, events uh, generated and uh, stuff like that? Because uh, Right now, it seems uh, it's just out, done automatically. I get uh, absurdly high cross section. This 10 to the 4, 45th peak of Barnes. Yeah, I mean, which simulation are you using? Um, mm. the, the one in the yeah. repository or those generated in the. Ah, oh, yeah, this is the test file. I think it's. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. This is, in fact, the gold gold events. I think ten events or something like that. So, yeah, the the, the values that you see there, uh, mm -hmm. they are not really reliable. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, what is it exactly? Is it uh, this uh, mm, gold gold collisions in Petia by Angantir, right? Yes. Uh, or... Yes. Okay. Uh, so I guess for 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 my setup, I should use uh, uh, simple Petia for for uh, PP, and I have no idea what to use. Uh, yeah, for the gold, for development purpose, you can use mm -hmm. Angantyr. Uh, mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that will give you. Uh, meaningful physical results, but for development, it's it's okay, it's fine. All right. Mm. So for the, for the final analysis, uh, I I have to I guess pick uh, some model myself and then just uh, generate data uh, from it or do, do, i think uh, you mentioned that you have some some data available right uh, already yeah on rcf uh -huh. there is some sample that maybe you can try to use mm -hmm. i posted here on the chat let me find yeah i will post again here in the chat the mm -hmm. where the the simulation is stored on RCF. All right. Uh, for some reason, I got a lot of printout now uh, for this comment, but I guess it's uh, working properly. Uh, hope it's working properly. Uh, OK, let me just uh, have a final look at the um, Uh, the plots, and I think we are almost done. Okay. Yes, yeah, so I think now now we can see at least so, some comparison. Um, uh, but I don't I don't see the data. Seem they they are really on top of each other. No, I don't think so. Um yeah, but in the in the ratio below I see it's yeah, basically it's equal to one. Uh, maybe it's because the the simulation mm -hmm. is too far from from the data, and that's why we're not seeing it. Yeah, it uh, could be because I haven't scaled it uh, by the weights uh, uh, yeah. yet. So I guess uh, I should do it. All right. Um, so I I have only final question. Uh, yeah, but basically um, implementing this. Uh, Invariant cross-section plots should be straightforward, uh, mm, but uh, what about such a, 
array a plot versus uh, number of binary collisions. Uh, this is not obvious for me. There, there is no binning, uh, or maybe just a centrality binning. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, the average of the number of binary collisions, right? Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, I mean, th there are a couple of options. Uh, mm -hmm. One thing that I saw people doing is instead of um, ha having the, the data as a function of an, the average of number of binary collisions, Mm -hmm. You use the the centrality interval. Okay, that's one possibility. The, uh, the other is uh, okay. You you have a way to to calculate the, the centrality in your analysis, and then mm -hmm. you uh, connect the centrality to the number of binary collisions the way it's showed here. I I, I imagine that that's how it's done, right? In, mm -hmm the experiment. So I think uh, I could simply make uh, uh, histograms of yields uh, versus uh, centrality, uh, uh, do this uh, separate analysis for PP, uh, for the gold. Uh, then I could uh, scale it to, to, to get uh, RAA as usual. And I'm just wondering about the final step. Uh, is there a way to, um, because in the final step, I uh, simply run this rivet merge Mm -hmm. um, and uh, mm, it's not obvious to me how to yeah because you, you calculate it in the final step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the ratio, which is the, the, the final step, you're going to do it in the finalize. Mm -hmm. um, in these slides, let me find where I put this. Mm -hmm. Can I interrupt? Oh, I have it in the quickly, in the code. Yeah. Could you maybe mm -hmm. um, put me in a breakout room with Christine? Sure. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, that, that, that's exactly the code. See, it, it checks if, if the PP and the decode, they are both uh, mm -hmm. filled. And then it will do scales and everything. And then you have you, you have this possibility of doing uh, the ratio after uh, scaling. Mm -hmm. uh, but you have to be sure that you have your histograms have the same binning. Mm -hmm. So in yes. in, yeah. in the slides, there is uh, a way that you book your histograms. I think. Let me see. I think it's slide mm -hmm. thirty five. And booking the way it's there, you're sure that um, your both of your histograms you have the same binning and the the yeah. ratio will not have problems to be done. Okay, well, but the, the, that that would be for uh, oh yes, that that, that would be for uh, RAA versus PT, but versus centrality, of course, I will have just one number for PP. And uh, two or three centrality beans for uh, the gold, and then I see. Yeah, it's not so obvious. So, hmm. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, you're completely right. Um, okay, there is a way to do this. Of course, there's always a way, uh, but mm -hmm. yeah, you need to. Okay, you can have a histogram for PP uh, just with one bin and multiple mm -hmm. bins for the for the decode, and then at the end you just uh, calculate the the ratio, and mm -hmm. and yeah. and you fill the I scatter two D uh, adding point by point. It's mm -hmm. possible to do it and, and with it. It's just not very straightforward. Okay, but but uh, yeah, it, maybe you can um, create the, the the histograms that store the, the information you need, mm -hmm. and 
and maybe I, I can, I don't know, send you an, uh, an example of how to, to fill the scatter to the point by point. Um, or you commit your code and mm -hmm. then I can edit the, the, the final part just to, to okay, do this. Okay, yes, yes. Uh, I will co co commit that in a, uh, in a minute. So uh, I understand that this finalized function uh, is also called uh, during uh, rivet merge. Uh, is yes, that correct? it's only called during rivet merge. Oh. If you did uh, th that first part, uh, because if you see your finalized mm -hmm. in the first part, it checks if the counters uh, for PP and the gold, if they have entries. So if you're running PP, your the gold will be empty. And if you're running the gold, the PP will be empty. So it will not run mm -hmm. finalize uh, until the end. So uh, the only case where both will be filled is during rivet merge, and then it will scale and do ratios. Oh, I see. So uh, in fact, I understand I should rather put this line at the at the beginning is no 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 it correct? wasn't no, the right no. place because it will check if uh, your counters have entries and then say if the gold available and pp available are true or false all right but i'm not doing any scale, other scaling here so i guess yes yes so in the example there was no no scaling i should i should put it here exactly uh, okay so i'm actually missing that Yes. And it's good also mm -hmm. to uh, check if this counter that you have to take the sum of weights, if it's non zero, or otherwise you have a division by zero here. Mm -hmm. Unusual things will happen. No. I, I understand. Okay. I think I implemented scaling uh, by number of events here. I'm just wondering if it makes sense in the plot. Hmm. Yeah, I think it didn't scale because maybe... Ah, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, the, the PP or for the, the gold, maybe it's empty and then it, no, it didn't call it. Okay. I don't know. Maybe you can put some C outs to see if mm -hmm. uh, it should get that or, or not. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. Okay, so b uh, besides that, uh, I think technicalities, uh, it all seems to be uh, working fine. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think I can c c continue uh, uh, on my own fr from now. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for uh, all the help and uh, mm -hmm. for, for your time. Yes, I'll try to finalize it. Okay, very good. Okay, good. Thanks. Thanks again. No problem. Hi, Antonio. Hi. Uh, could you please help me with uh, troubleshooting my problem? Sure. I'm going to share my screen if that's OK. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. C can you hear me? Ajita? Hello. Oh. Okay, I can't hear you. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's only... Oh, now, now I can. Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> Let me uh, share my screen. Um... Okay, I can see your screen. Okay, uh, so I was getting this these warnings, and then there's nothing inside the Revit plot. Yeah, these warnings they, they are fine because um, for the scatter to this uh, Revit merge will not uh, merge scatter to this, and for the centrality uh, it's also fine. It's uh, in the finalized, we don't need the, the centrality table. 
but what do I do about the fact that there is no plot created? You did um, rivet so, make HTML. Oh, maybe I did not. <laughs> okay, that's that's fine. I had other questions too. So that might be just that I forgot to do that. Um, so yeah, I have um, actually my real question is uh, how do I do the double ratio? Mm. my figure three has like two single ratios and then my figure four has a double ratio and i tried to do it this way where uh, first i create the single ratios and then um where is it like in the i guess in the finalize So something like this, but I guess it cannot take ratios of these two. Yeah, it, it doesn't make ratios from yeah. scatter points. <laughs> I, I have to tell you that I faced this problem recently when I was implementing a D a D zero a D meso analysis in, in Alice. Uh -huh. And I wrote uh, a function to make this ratio. Uh -huh. uh, maybe I will um, I will post it uh, somewhere. Um, I think it's kind of long to put in the chat. I, I will send you. Are you in Slack, right? I am, although I find it difficult to navigate the different <laughs> discussions that are happening since I've never used it before. Let me just find you here. Okay, I, I sent you on Slack. Okay. Um, so this is a piece of code that uh, you can put in your .cc. Mm. And so what is it essentially doing? Could you kind of... It does the ratio between scatter plots. I see. So it takes a, looks at like each individual points and takes the ratio or... Um, no, you... if you have two scatter plots with the same... Um, with the same binning, mm -hmm. uh, it will return. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I brought this, but I don't really remember. I think the, the first two, yeah, the first two is the, the scatter plots that you want to use for the division. Mm -hmm. And the last one, um, I, wait, oh no. The, I, the, I, the I, second one is a histogram. Sorry, I, I, I sent you the, the wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just a minute. That's why it's not making sense. Okay, and now I sent you a function that calls a divider, divide scatter. Okay, this this one will make sense. sense. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you have uh, the two first scatters yeah. is, are the one that you want to use. And the yeah, third so will return. The, yeah, so the, uh, my question was, like you go and point by point take the ratio right yes okay that seems to be what it's doing okay yeah i'll give this a try and then this time i'll for not forget to do the uh, what make what whatever that step is <laughs> repeat make okay thank you no problem Hey, Antonio, um, I made these plots, but I'm not sure if they're correct. Um, can you have a look at them? Sorry, I was muted. Sure, you can. 
uh, share your screen. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, the data is here. You're just not showing the simulation. Right. Um, maybe I don't have it in my code. So, so I have the counter and then then finalize. Did I miss something in the analyze part? Um, this histogram is the one that you you showed you're displaying there, right? Right. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, one possibility because it says um, JPSI. I don't remember the code. Yes, it's JPSI. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, do you know if, if because which simulation are you using that test uh, file for the that I we think have? so. The info file. No, no, that's the um, the run dot sh. Um, let me. Oh, no. Yes, the test file, the PCO. Yeah, I mean, it's says 10 uh, gold gold event. So maybe you just don't have a JPSI there. I don't know if you try to see out, like if you find the, a JPSI to see out, yeah. I don't know, DPT, oh. just to be sure that there's some, at least one there. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Yeah, could, could be just <laughs> statistics and uh, you are you on RCF or? Yes, I'm on RCF. Yeah, there are more uh, gold gold events there. Uh, maybe oh, you can. But I'm using PP. Uh, PP. Does it matter? Um, okay, on RCF, I think you also have uh, a lot of PP events. Okay. Um, you you can can use it instead of this test file. Um, yeah, it could, could it be just because you, you just don't have any JPSI size in the test file. Okay, and then I think I am lost somewhere after that. I'm not sure where else to go after that. I'm sorry? After making the plot, I think I am at... Okay. All right, I'll try and figure something out. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, just you can just uh, see out to see if you really don't have any JPSI in, in the test file. Mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, the data is appearing there, just the simulation that it's not. Right. OK. All right. Thank you. No problem. Yeah, uh, hey, Antonio. Hi. Hi. Uh, I think I need your help. Sure. I'm going to share the screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. So, uh, 
you remember we had this minus weight issue. Yes. And I, so now we, we don't have a final solution for this, right? Yeah, I mean, um, we kind of found a solution, but we need to, um, to fix on RCF and generate uh, the, the simulation again. Okay. So, so I mean, for, for us, it's a solution, but for you, maybe it's not, <laughs> because yeah, unfortunately, we don't have the, the simulation right now. Okay, but no problem. I, I took your advice, so I manually deleted all the minus in the weight, mm -hmm. and so that I had, I'm having some successful plots. And let me see. So this is the latest one I'm having. Okay. Uh, does it mean that I don't have any simulation points? Um, could be. Uh, what kind of particle are you plotting? Uh, photons, direct photons. Direct photons. And, um, in, in your .cc, uh, which projection are you using for the direct photons? I think... Prompt final state. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I, I'm not sure if this is a problem, but in your init, you declared a prompt final state. And you analyze when you do apply projection, uh, you're passing final state. I think you, you have to change to prompt final state. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. I will try. Yeah, I will try that and I will come back in two or three minutes. Okay. Thank you.
Oh, hi, Anthony, I'm back. Hi. So, so now I see some difference, but I'm not very significant. So uh, let me jump between the previous one and the current one. This is what I had, mm. and this is what I had. So I see only yeah one plot that you have an entry. Yeah, and and that's only in the first beam. Yes. Um, uh, which file are you using for the simulation? I'm using a sample file from 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 the system. Okay. From RCS. Yeah. Like this one. Okay. Yeah, this is the first uh, PT hard bin. I, uh, no, this is minimum bias, I think. Zero, two, minus one. This is probably minimum bias. Um, um, maybe you could try a, a simulation with a higher PT hard bin, because then the probability that you have direct photons from higher PT it would be much larger. Okay. Um, let me... So here are the so here a PT hard means yeah this PT hard is the minimum uh, PT of the, the hard interaction so um, if you see you have for example uh, 5 to 20 so this is a uh, uh, the interval of the, the hard scattering. So you could maybe use one of these or maybe even higher, this 20 to 30 GV, uh, to see if you get more uh, direct photons uh, in higher PT. Uh -huh. But here this PT means the PT of photons. N not exactly the photons, but it's connected because uh, if you have uh, interaction, let's say, uh, of 30 GeV, uh, you'd be more likely that you'll have uh, direct photons uh, close to this, this PT, like, uh, I don't know, uh -huh. 20, something like that. And this zero to minus one means this is a minimum bias. It means that there is no requirement in the PT hard bin. So, I mean, it, it's much more likely that we will generate uh, low PT particles from the hard scattering. Oh, aha, uh -huh, okay, okay, I got it. And then here, uh, okay. I mean, so we force the simulation to have this high PT in, in the hard interaction so that we have, with just a few events, we have uh, statistics for higher PT particles. So if I need between 4 and 22 GeV, uh, I have to run, let's say, uh, five to twenty and twenty thirty. Yeah, the, uh, at the end, uh, we you need to run over all the the PT hard bins because then Rivet will uh, scale the the contribution of it of each of them so that mm -hmm. at the end you have something that it's like minimal bias. Okay. But for testing, just to see if your code is running, maybe you can try with the. 5 to 20 or maybe 20 to 30. Okay. And this should give you more than 
just one beam, I hope. Okay. And, and, and another question. So here, this uh, file is a half MC file. And should I unzip this file? Or? Uh, no, you don't need it. Uh, one very interesting feature in Rivet is that Rivet is able to read uh, compressed uh, GZ files. Okay. Awesome. And then one more question. If I need to run, let's say, one from the 5 to 20, one from the 20 to 30, uh, I should run both of them and merge the results. And I run them uh, separately. Run first for one of them and then uh, another output for the, the next PT hard beam. I mean, like, like we will have two revets.udav. Yes, for example, for the uh, 5 to 20, you can maybe call rivet uh, 520. And, uh, and for the 2030, you also change the, the name of the output. So you have two uh, different uh, rivet outputs. And eventually, do I have to merge them or combine? Yes, then later you can merge them using uh, rivet merge. I see. Uh, I will try it out. Actually, I have more questions about system, but if this works, I will continue asking, asking other questions. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. No problem. Hi Antonio, I have a question related to the RAA. Sure. Uh, so basically I have to do two different run, one with copper gold and one with proton proton. Mm -hmm. And where, what, what, is, what is the logic when I want to divide the, the heavy ion data, data points with the, with the proton protons? They cannot do it in, in the analysis part because if I run on the copper gold, then I have that data. If I run on the PP, then I have that one. There yes. I can do the division. Yeah, the you process. do it in, in finalize. Uh, and then you have to be sure that finalize will be called only when you run uh, rivet merge. Uh, how can I do that? I have this in the slides. Let me find the. Uh, 
Uh, it's slide 37. There are some instructions of how to be sure that ah. finalize will be called only when you have uh, both um, outputs. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Okay, thanks. And then, yeah, after the, the, the first line in the slide, you add the, uh, the scaling and the, the divide command. Yes. And here I can include this T, A, B, and the cross section as well, uh, which is in the definition of the RAA, I mean. Uh, ah, oh, yes, yes. It's one of the, the scalings that you, you need to do for the, for the RAA. Okay, okay. You, you could, for example, uh, just scale the, your PP histogram, mm -hmm. uh, or after the, the ratio, you directly scale the, the scatter 2D. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Okay, and, and probably it's advised to use the numbers from the paper. Yes. For CAB yes. and. Yes, I really recommend that, and Christian also recommend that. Do ah, not okay. use the, the values that you could get from the simulation. Okay, where I can get the cross section for proton proton differentiated in PT? Um, you, the, the, which cross section from proton proton? Uh, I will link the paper I used to do the analysis, and here you can find the so the definition of the RAB for me is in the page four. It's the equation, the second equation. I, I don't see, uh, are you sh trying to share your screen? No, I put the link in the chat. Uh, ah, okay. I can, I can share my screen if it's better. Uh, maybe I can just open here. Okay, which page I should look? It's page four. The second equation, equation number two, mm -hmm. on top of the left column. Yes, the RAB. Yeah, so there is this sigma PP, which is the cross section yes. of proton, proton. And it is differentiated in PT, mm -hmm. of course. So, But yeah. I cannot find it in the paper. Maybe I'm just. Yeah, for this, Over I think it. you can use uh, the value that the simulation will give you. Uh, uh -huh. Let me just find what's the command. Yeah, I will paste it in the chat. Okay. You can use this, and this will get the, the cross section. Okay. And which object is affected by this function? I, I, I should you, call it on the particle, or? No, you just call uh, the normalization, for example, you post an example. Oh, I, okay, so this is just return something, okay. Yes. Ah, okay, okay then, okay. Okay, so I don't have to use it as a pointer or something. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Then, okay, the noise is clear, thanks. And then you can use the, the uh, I think the TAB that you have in the paper. Yeah, I have a table for that. Yes. Beside the, yeah, there is that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and that's, that's all, okay. Okay, thank you. No problem. Hi, Antonio. I have one question. Um, sure. So I'm getting this error message um, related to double booking of a histogram. And I, when I look at it, I don't know how to go about it for the RE plot without doing double booking. So I can share my screen. So basically, this is the error that I'm getting. Ah, okay. Double booking of the 411. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so it's complaining about double booking here. Oh, should I like th the way I'm doing it here? It's fine, right? For me. Um, yes, but in, in the first two histograms that you declared, they have the same string in the object. Oh no, they, they're not. No, Sorry, they're, I was no. misreading. Um, uh, let me see. Ah, okay. Uh, did, did this histogram that you have the, the pointer over it uh, and and, and below you have the same names there, uh, ref name four plus underscore num. Mm -hmm. So you you have to just use another name. Oh, I see. So okay. So these also, even though um, the string inside here is different, I should also have that different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you're saying something like this should fix it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, and I guess I don't have any questions immediately, but might have more. Okay. Um, yeah, just test and if you still have, have the problem, okay. just come back. Okay, thanks. No problem. When I do um, make um, HTML, then I get this like bunch of errors that I cannot understand. But do, do it generate the uh, the plots? Uh, I think so. And last time, I mean, I didn't check these ones, but then it was also like uh, showing axes that didn't make sense. Um, axes that you uh, did not yeah. book? 
yeah so for example uh, this would be the bottom fraction should go from 0 to something like 20 uh, maybe I can show you the help and see let me so it should look more like this going from 0 to not 20 but 9 maybe mm. should be like that but somehow when I'm dividing something's not right is this the double ratio or or it's no, this one is uh, the B fraction bottom fraction so this is um, just from the gold gold data set Okay. Um, let me just have a look in your dot yoda. What was the code of the figure? It's two one one. Uh, yeah, the one that I showed to you is two one one. Is your code updated on GitHub? Uh, I haven't pushed it in a while, so maybe I should do that now. Yeah, if you could do that, I would like to run a test using your analysis. I just committed. Push okay. The changes.
Antonio. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think that I am at the stage where I need to try to run a code at the higher statistic sample to see if if the plot may make sense and then maybe do some another debugging. So I think that I, I don't have anything to do now or when we are waiting for uh, the higher statistic samples we generate. Yeah, we have some now, but I would say that they are not very reliable at the moment. Okay, so for me, is it okay if uh, I will leave this meeting and I will be following the Slack if something will come up and then maybe to try uh, to um, download uh, this uh, this higher statistic sample and to try try on that? Yeah, sure. Okay, so yeah. so thanks and uh, see you for see you today. Thomas. Okay, bye bye. Well, there was this 12K events that Christian shared, uh, Gold Gold PTI events, by the way. Uh, that's what you need. Yes, but I have a uh, Proton Proton and the Gold. So ah, uh, okay. Gold Gold mm -hmm. is not, not good for me. But uh, thanks. Okay, so see you.
Um, hi, Anton. Hi. If if I'm going to say I still couldn't see the simulation. Uh, you you can't see the the direct photons. I cannot. I mean, it's like the same as. Um, in, and now you are using the um, the, oh. the higher PT hard beams. Yes. Okay. Uh, let me uh, give me just one minute to say something to Ajira because I I realized what was happening. Oh. Antonio, I'm here. If you wanna, uh, I was I just came out of the room. There was no one there. So if you need anyone to help, let me know. Uh, well, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe you could help him with the direct photons. Yeah, sure. So that was uh, Zendong, that was it? Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Then I, I'm going to the breakout room. Yeah, let's go to breakout room one and then we'll take a look there. Okay. Okay, uh, Ajita, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. Hi. So, so here's what's happening. Um, I will share my screen. Okay. Okay. Can you see your uh, reanalysis yeah. dot essay? Mm -hmm, so, I'm seeing it. Yeah, for testing, uh, you're using uh, for gold gold and PP the same um, simulation file, uh, which is gold gold uh, two hundred GeV. Oh, okay. So when you um, fill your histograms, only uh, the gold gold histograms are being filled because I the, see. Okay. and then it's, because it's not providing the wrong file. No, but for testing, it, it, it's okay. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe since you, you want to run finalize and everything, uh, maybe, yeah, in this case, it would be better to use a PP sample for uh, when, when you run here the, the PP case. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, what's happening is that since uh, the PP histograms, they are empty, uh, your code is not running finalized. And uh -huh. then uh, you're not doing the ratio. That, that's why the, the other points in the data are not appearing. Um, I see. So, but... Uh... Okay, that ratio should have happened. Like uh, in my if condition there, in the finalize, I say that if the gold gold file is there, it should uh, calculate that um, B fraction ratio, right? Like, um, I think, where is it? Because the... Uh, you uh, mean... So if you go a little bit lower, Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. Okay, I had like the first divide inside of the loop where it says it needs both PP as well as gold gold. Yes. Okay. Uh, but, but this is fine because, I mean, you want to do the ratio only once. So I, I think it's okay to put it here. Uh, uh -huh. But that's just the reason why you can't see the, the points when you plot them. If you... Okay, then that probably means that I should move to a higher statistics sample to do the test. This would be better because I, I think you already have the as well structured and using more statistics. Yeah, these are all the histograms I need. I don't need anything more. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think you it would be very nice if you could run with more statistics, especially the PP uh it's fine the, the simulation there's no problem with the the weights and everything with the pp okay so um okay. could you point me to the larger statistic sample because i haven't been paying attention to that part <laughs> nicely yeah let me see i think i 
posted here in the chat. Um, let me just find. Just to make sure, like, did you uh, make any changes to my code? Uh, no, I mean, I did, or... but just, you know, some C outs just to see. Oh, okay. But no, apart from that, I, I mean, I, I did one thing, uh, maybe let me show you, but uh, this is, is something that you don't need to do. possible for you to just push it, like? Uh, no, no, it's something that you, you don't need to oh, do, I see. Okay. which is, um, here in the ratio, when you book it, I yeah. pass this true, this yeah. Boolean. So yeah, even if you don't do the ratio, it will plot at least the data. Oh, okay. And then and then you have, let me also show you. See, you have all the points from the fraction uh, here. So I guess, but it, it's uh, something that you don't need to do because yeah. when you do the ratio, then it, it should it will plot all the the points. It looks like my normalizations are quite off, but that's probably just because of the statistics. Because um, yeah, you're using uh, gold gold for both of them. Probably yeah. that's why it's it's off. But yeah, I think that's it. You're using the the PP uh, for the PP part, then I think it will run finalize and then the, the points will be there. Okay. So the data, like the higher statistics is here in the, uh, like let me find the slide. Well, I guess this was discussed in Slack, right? Yes. One thing that I noted is that I think your plots, you normalize not only by number of events, but also uh, one over two pi and pt. Oh, yeah, I, I think that's what I'm not doing in my um, Yeah, I think it, this part is still missing. Yeah. Yeah, at least in the first um, first plot. Yes. So just to note that what I was planning on doing after, so since we have <laughs> the Angantir events that we simulated have the wrong weights, so we have to re-simulate new samples, I was planning on running all of the analyses over a higher statistic sample when we have it. That is not really feasible right now. Um, but I mean, it's still good if you do the sanity check and make sure that the obvious things are fixed. I may also ask you guys if something isn't fixed to look at it after the workshop. Because what I want to do, we want to take all of this work that everybody has done, and then you can use it and look at Angantir and get physics, can draw physics conclusions from that. And the other thing we can do is turn around to the collaborations and ask them to approve the analyses, which requires them to create a process for approving the analyses, which does not exist yet. But um, we need a higher statistics sample for them to do that, a high enough statistics sample that they can tell if it's right.
We nominally have 20 minutes left. Um, I see that there are, um, there's one person in the breakout room with Raghav. Um, let me ask a similar question to what we started the day with, which is, are you done with your analysis to the point, if you're done with your analysis to the point that you are mainly waiting on a high statistics test, please click yes. If you are done, if you are not done, but you know what you have to do, please select the coffee cup. And if you are Let's separate, you still have outstanding questions, click no. Um, and if you think you know, but you're not highly confident that you know what you, that if you're not, if you have no outstanding questions, but you're not confident that you can complete everything on your own, choose the time, the clock option. Okay, all the coffee cups just disappeared. <laughs> and everybody said, yeah, I think I'm done, but I, I, I think so, but I'm going to choose the time one. Okay, we have a couple yeses and a couple coffee cups. Um, I'm not seeing any outstanding. I think, Ajiro, you are probably a yes, right? Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I okay. was distracted, but yeah. Um, I mean, I'm almost done with, um, the download's almost complete. Um, uh, so I, I'll try to run the 12 K P three events and, and maybe post on Slack what it looks like for gold gold. Uh, yeah, I tried with RCF, but I ran out of disk space. So, okay. Yeah. So that could work out. I ran out of disk space too, man. They should just give me more right Had a bite. <laughs> after that chris <laughs> okay um where's huang uh yeah can you hear me yes uh, i actually run through some hygiene events like it's ten thousand events but i still could not get a, a meaningful way to flow. So I'm, I'm not sure if my calculation is wrong or something other is wrong. Okay. Um, that's a tricky one. So we, we do have AMPT that Austin generated and it's going to take a while to get it to where people can look at it. Um, I am torn between saying maybe you could pop up your analysis by sharing your screen and. Uh, yes, I can. Um. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Um, you can see in the in this one, I run uh, like uh, ten thousand events, and uh, the the actual. Result is so. Uh, one question: the hygiene event is good, good, right? I yes, because these would have been where we were basically using S Phoenix's events. Yeah, but I didn't get any flow signal. 
maybe my my code is wrong. Let me yeah. So let me ask because Takahito had also been looking at these events. Takahito, did you yep. see uh, non-zero flow in the hijing events that we were sneaking a peek at from uh, S Phoenix? Yes, actually, yes, I got the okay. non-zero being a signal. Okay. Oh, for and some center it is. My yes. code, yeah. For some, okay, can you open your plot again, um, Wei Swang? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think Takahito was implementing a plot, uh, implementing an analysis that uses an event plane method. Can you? Yeah, I'm also using an event plane method. Okay. Maybe I can, and yeah. Which centrality was this? Um, I didn't actually select centralities. Uh, I forgot, yeah. Oh, you know what? The centrality actually would be uh, with the centrality calibration was not done on hygiene anyway, so it would not be reliable. But this would then be an inclusive VN. Yeah. Which so, why can't can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah. So, are you using a hygiene sample with Aftabana or without Aftabana? Uh, I'm using this file. Let me. Let me see. Um. Ah. No. Maybe without after. I'm using this one. The I mean, the third one. Yep. That's third one. Uh, I'm using the second one. Second ah, one has flow. Okay. Maybe I can try using the second one next time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So then, if you need, if you need it, and I can generate more hygiene sample with after partner. Do you need more? Uh, I think I will try the first one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, yeah. Then let's see first. Okay. Okay. That may, in practice, end up being resolved after the workshop. Yeah. I think, let me, um, does anyone have outstanding questions? Okay. I have one question. So did I hear it right when I heard that like um, I can directly input the HEPMC ZZ format file uh, for the higher statistics without having to um, extract them? I'm not sure I understand your question. So like if I want to use the higher statistics sample, um, I see that like in the location Ajita, we can't hear you right now. Can you hear me now? Yes. Sorry, I think I muted myself accidentally. So uh, I'm trying to use the higher statistics sample that's provided in the Phoenix Scratch. Um, so uh, do I uh, I thought I heard it earlier that I don't have to extract those files and I can directly input them. Is Correct. Correct. Yes. Now the plan is, so plan A was that I would be running all the high statistics for you guys. Um, and then I direct, we directed you towards the higher statistics mainly. So sometimes you need more interactive, higher statistics interactively just to do some sanity checking. Um, the, I haven't done things like the centrality calibration or a bunch of stuff like that because we now know that there's an issue with the, um, with the weights for those files. So I'm going to repeat that 
when we have a patch to fix the weights. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I uh, just needed to see at least a few data points to know that things were going fine. So just wanted to do that. Yeah. Um, you should um, you should be able to just run over those and you don't have to do anything. Okay, thank you. I think we may wrap up. So I'm actually going to go ahead and close the breakout rooms, which will kick the last two out. I cannot close the breakout rooms because I made you host. Antonio, can you close the breakout rooms? Yes. Let me see if I know how to do it. <laughs> okay. Close all rooms. It's, yes. it's easy. Antonio, I don't want to hold up all of the work, but uh, Christian just barely produced a new calibration file. Can I ask you some quick questions in a minute about uh, just how I implement the new calibration? Because uh, I'm not quite sure how it plays with the command line variables and the file path name inside of my uh, code file, et cetera. Uh, the calibration, you mean the, the centrality calibration? Yes, the centrality calibration. Yeah, w what was, what's the, the question about that? When you're running the analysis, so let me find an ex example. If, if I know the answer, then it's an easy question because um, Antonio is the one who does all the real work. Um, so you have this... I'm just going to share my screen really quickly. Um, I spit out to the screen um, one of the sample um, run scripts. So here you're passing in a name of a calibration file. Yeah. When you are running over copper, copper, instead of having the calibration for gold, gold, you would have the calibration for copper, copper. Okay, so from the That's command it. line, from the call bit, I can I can easily give it the new file. Yep. But inside of my uh, file, there was also a uh, declare centrality statement, um, which had what appeared to be the file name inside of it. There's this declare centrality with camel case, and then Rick centrality star, and then uh, and then and then there's the the name to the file itself. Yeah, it would be this, it's not the name of the file, but it's the name of the table inside the file. And it would be the same for uh, independent of the, the collision system. The, 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 the table name should be identical. Yes. Yep. Okay, then, then thank you. That, I think that answers both of my questions then. Excellent. Okay, so I think, um, I think this is a good place to wrap up. Actually, um, Christian, before, yes. before we wrap up, so uh, the Zhen Dong, so his analysis is prompt photons. Yeah. Right? So how do we get prompt photons from DiJet files? You, uh, have, you have fragmentation photons. So you, you select a projection for prompt? And you get one in the 40 to 50 PT had been, you get one prompt photon every thousand events. It needs high statistics. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's all. Then, the, then I don't know if there is a way to, I mean, you can run gamma jet events and you can get, I guess you can call And it gets the cross photons. sections wrong. So this is right. one where it's a high, it needs high statistics now. The pro and the con actually in this same repository, um, 
you, there's a whole bunch of analyses, um, perhaps because I'm a sadist, but my undergrads implemented a bunch of gamma hadron correlation analyses or partially mm -hmm. implemented under Antonio's fantastic direction. So we need the higher statistics anyways. All right, okay. So we're just gonna have to run to get high statistics. So what, maybe this also a question. So when you do prompt projection, uh, how is that prompt for in the, in the digit sample, how is the prompt photon different from photon that you get in all final state? I know it, it includes pi zero decay, but that, is that the only difference? I think that is a Christian question. Yeah, right, I mean, he's also here. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> because this is always a tricky thing, right? When you do isolated photon measurements, you have to make sure they're not fragmentation and then it's experiment dependent how you define isolation and then prompt and there's a background and it's complicated. But, but this is exactly why Rivet is the right tool to do this because- um, If we know what that means, but we don't know what it means, right? What, well, so um, I believe that prompt means that it was not from the decay of something. So it should explicitly exclude the, um, the, photons from uh, pi zero and eta decays um, or any other decays and there's so it's only photons I, that showed up before hadronization yes but i think that would include fragmentation yeah. photons yes yeah. so but fragmentation photons that difference is somewhat arbitrary between a fragmentation photon and what we call a direct photon. So, and, and in, in various, I mean, in various analyses, so like the direct photon RAA is going to include some fragmentation photons. So if you have an analysis that uses an isolation cut, the, uh, you have to apply the isolation cut in the rivet analysis. You have to right. match okay. the isolation cut that was done yeah. by. Uh, as far as I know, in the paper, uh, they measure the direct photon. So called direct photon means that the photon uh, except, I mean, ex exclude the decay photons only. Yeah, it excludes the decay photons. It does not exclude fragmentation photons because fragmentation photons are not created from the decay of a hadron. No, but in but in practice, um, like when you do this in data, you have like the isolation cut that you apply will inevitably get rid of some fragmentation components, right? Correct. It depends on the analysis. So if you have a proton-proton analysis, experiments will often use a, an isolation cut. Um, your isolation cut will sometimes also cut what we would think are direct photons, because sometimes by chance you will have a neighboring photon. Um, and I, I guess... And, and I may get in trouble with Christian here. My, um, my understanding of the philosophy behind Rivet is sort of, okay, we may not always know exactly what we're doing. So sometimes when we're doing an experimental analysis, we do something kind of wrong, meaning it wasn't what we intended to do. But if you implement the exact same procedure in the on the data and in the Monte Carlo, they at least should be wrong in the same way, and therefore they are comparable. So then you need to apply the isolation cut on the in final the state, on final state, not on prompt. Uh, well, you would want to if you have a prompt. If you have a prompt photon, you would then want to look for any 
particles, and I think you would want to look at final state particles nearby because the detector would be sensitive to final state particles. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. So you don't do the prompt projection. You do the final state projection, get all okay. the photons, run isolation around it, and then select those. Christian has... Un has yes. I am sorry to just interject in this fantastic discussion about prompt photons. I just wanted to say bye bye to everyone because I have to leave. Uh, it was fantastic yeah, meeting all of you implementing stuff. I, I will make sure to, to check the Slack channel uh, going forward. Please, yeah, as you, as, as, you too, as you were, as you were. <laughs> Thank you very much, Christian. Thank you, Christian. Yeah. See, you, see you around. Bye. Yeah, I well, I think this sort of gets into a bit of a question. How much do you trust the prompt projection? It's not about trusting them. If you trust the prompt Is, projection, then you don't do isolation cut, right? No, because I think you if you have an if you have something like I believe the Phoenix Gold Gold direct photon analysis does not use an isolation cut because of the, in wow. gold gold, you cut too many real direct photons just by random combinations. So in that case, you can just use the prompt projection. So there's two it, things, right? There's, as always, there's purity and then efficiency. So how much back, how much fragmentation photons are you letting in? How many prompt photons are you cutting out? I don't, I think the distinction between a prompt photon and a fragmentation photon is experimentally arbitrary. Either of them are created in the collision and not from the decay of something. Okay, fair enough. I and mean, this may be just a very tiny point that we're just getting. <laughs> no, I think this is an important point. I actually would say this is a, this is probably an essential point, and we have an entire channel on the Slack devoted to discussing these differences. <laughs> and what on earth are you even trying to get? It is my understanding that the prompt photon gets you most of the way there, but if you have an isolation cut and an analysis, you probably should you sh ideally should implement it in the rivet analysis as well. Okay. Because you can cut some real, so you can cut some of your signal with an isolation cut. Right. Now you could have an experimental analysis that tries to correct for that, which is also a model dependent correction. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where it gets kind of hairy and analysis specific as to what exactly you should do. No, no, fair enough, I understand. Okay, that though, I think also when we get into the approval of analyses, which is not going to happen in this workshop because none of us have the authority to approve analyses for the experiment, right. um, this can um, this can come up in these discussions, and in some sense, the hard work is getting. 99% of the work is writing the analyses, which you guys have done here. But then some of you get into some of these gnarly physics questions, which may come up as well during the analysis, which is less coding and more, are we sure we really understand what we're doing? Okay. Um, Raghav, did you, you were about to say something? No, 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 it's fine. Just okay. okay. We are five minutes over. Uh, we're going to try to get high statistics samples so we can run everybody's analysis on higher statistics. The goal was to do it this week. It didn't happen. We are epsilon away from doing it. Um, and then I'm going to, I actually can post the output of rivet make HTML on my web page so that everybody can see their output as well. Um, and uh, hopefully we can then use this to get approval by the experiments, which would be awesome. Um, and I do hope that you will proceed with the last few steps to finish the analysis so we can get it approved. And then we can start hopefully talking about actual physics output from this because it's really cool.
I mean, thank all the participants, thank the instructors, even the ones that aren't here, but have been monitoring the Slack and participating in the discussions. Um, I, this is awesome. And thank you. And let me pass it to Antonio and Raga for any closing remarks. Oh, and Antonio did like Antonio did 90% of the work. Well, Antonio is awesome. Uh, let me say that I would like to uh, thank Christine because she was the mastermind behind the, the whole workshop and of course all the tutors and it's special to everyone who attended and I, I, I'm really happy because everyone was really active, made a lot of questions so uh, I think that was a, a very good experience. No, it was great. Thanks guys for uh, doing all the work. <laughs> yeah. Antonio did the work. Yeah. yeah. Good. All right. We'll close it. We're going to keep monitoring the Slack. And if it is useful to have one on one um, video discussions, we can do that as well. Um, and I hope to send you guys all output when we have it. With that, let's close. It's lunchtime here and dinner time elsewhere, and bedtime other places. So, all right. Bye -bye. Thanks, everybody. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.